Hey what's up guys Tektine here and I am back again with a brand new video. So before I begin this video as always I want to really thank you all so much for watching this one. If you enjoy my content please leave a thumbs up. Also if you haven't subscribed to the channel just consider doing so I really greatly appreciate it. And just to keep, uh, keep you guys updated we are at 7200 and we're just getting 3 more subscribers. So 7203 subscribers which means we're that much closer to the 10,000 subscriber mark point. But yeah. Uh, also, if you want to follow me on the rest of my social media, links will be below. And let's just go ahead and get started with today's video. So in my previous video, I did a review. Um, I did a, not a review, but a comparison between the LG Stylo 4 and the Google Pixel 3. And it received some good feedback. And I also I actually wanted to do another comparison. And today, we're going to be doing the Galaxy J7 Refined versus the Google Pixel 3. Basically, the best, the... Um, really the best budget phone that Samsung has versus the Google's flagship. So yeah, let's just go ahead and see how this comparison goes. Now, let me be clear, uh, because a lot of you a lot of you have misunderstood the previous video and thought, okay, why are you comparing a $800 phone versus a, I don't know, like a $200 phone? Well, the reason I'm doing it is one, I just want to see how budget phones stack up to flagships. Two, I just want to see the gap, like how, I mean, I just want to see our flagships even worth it in 2018 but yeah okay so let's just go ahead and get started so let's talk about the j7 refined for a moment and i did a full review on this phone links will be in the description of course and it has a 5.5 inch 720p display not the highest resolution but it is a solid ips panel and you also have your front facing 13 megapixel camera your home button um your home button, which does not support any fingerprint sensor, uh, which does not have any fingerprint scanner, which is kind of disappointing. I know it's a budget phone, but uh, nearly every budget phone with this price point has a fingerprint sensor, so that's kind of disappointing. Your back and your multitasking button are also on the bottom, and they don't really light up, so it's kind of hard to tell which is which. Also, on the side, you have your power button. On the right-hand side, you have your power button, as well as your awkwardly placed speaker. And on the bottom of the phone, you have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, which is nice to see that in 2018. And a disappointing, I don't know, micro USB connector, a really old connector at this point. And we are in late 2018, about to enter 2019. So I don't even know why companies, especially something like a company like Samsung still is, um, still wants to keep this old connector. But hey, it is what it is. And you also have your um, volume up and down. And on the back, you have your 13 megapixel camera as well as your Samsung logo. And that's really it for design. It is the refined version of the last year's J7 2017, which a lot of people liked as a budget phone. And it was a really good budget phone. So it's a really good, so it's a really good budget smartphone. It just needs a little bit of upgraded, I don't know, an upgraded design. That 18 by 9 aspect ratio design would be nice to see on the next version. Okay. So that's really it for the design of the J7 Refine and the Google Pixel 3, which is this is going to be my what, third video on it and more videos on this phone will be coming soon. So stay tuned for that if you guys are interested. So you have your dual 8 megapixel camera on the front, your uh, standard, uh, so you, the standard one as well as a wide angle 8 megapixel camera and you do have this 18 by 9 aspect ratio display, uh, display. And it is also 5.5 inches. So because the bezels are smaller, the footprint of the Google Pixel 3 is smaller. It is the same size display. If you put them side by side, it is the same size display. It's just the Google Pixel 3 shrinks down the bezels. So the phone is actually, um, so the phone's body is smaller than uh, the Galaxy J7 Refine's body. Okay. So on the side, you also have your power button as well as your volume up and down. So one thing that I like about the J7 Refine in terms of design that I think is better in my opinion, not necessarily the material, but the fact that the volume up and down are separated so they're easy to distinguish between the two. And here they're just one strip. Now I understand this is, uh, they did this because uh, to, dif to help differentiate between the power and the volume up and down, but it would have been nice to see uh, some sort of separation and then probably add some sort of texture on the uh, power button on the Google Pixel 3. Okay. So also on the front you have your dual stereo speakers and these are one of the best speakers that I have ever tested on a smartphone So they definitely get a thumbs up from me and I'll let you guys listen to them Also, um, you do have this always on display uh, since it does use AMOLED screen 
and it doesn't really drain that much battery since uh, all the black pixels so uh, since all the pixels really turn off except for the ones that are showing on the screen like the time and the weather okay and you also get your little battery indicator at the bottom right here so that's pretty cool now on the back uh, you have kind of a controversy in terms of design so you have your fingerprint sensor as well as the best camera that has ever been put on a smartphone and I've seen a lot of reviews on the camera I'm working on my own separate review so if you guys are interested to see that leave a uh, leave a thumbs up or leave it in the comment below hey I want to see a camera review from you regarding the pixel 3 and the reason I I mean I've heard I, I've heard a lot about it and I've seen a lot of videos but to me I'm like I mean, how, how good could this camera be? And as it turns out, this camera is amazing. And I'll show you a quick sample shots that I've taken in a little bit. So you, also, so you have a glossy glass as well as this soft matte feeling glass. And it's not really as durable. I keep it, I keep it in this case all the time. So, and I don't plan on taking it off the case anytime soon. Especially after the videos and the stories that I've heard of it scratching easily. I don't want to try it out So yeah, there's that and you also have your little Google logo at the bottom and yeah I mean, okay also on the bottom you have USB-C and this phone does not have any 3.5 millimeter headphone jack So that's just the state of 2018 flagships. Okay So now that we talked about design what makes this an $800 phone and what makes this a sub $200 phone? couple of things one is the material used in the design so the Google Pixel 3 uses more premium material like glass and metal while the the J7 Refine uses only plastic it's really a whole it's just a block of plastic all around and the design is really clean on this phone yeah it is plastic but hey plastic doesn't break as easy as glass so yeah there's that if you drop the Pixel 3 on the back it most likely, depending on the drop, it's probably going to break easier than the Galaxy J7 Refine. So there's that. So it's a really back and forth between the design. Yeah, it uses a premium material. It does feel better, but it also is more fragile. So yeah, there's that. Also, the display is uh, definitely better on the Pixel 3. It uses AMOLED technology. Now, one downside that I do have about it is that the Galaxy J7 Refine surprisingly gets brighter than the Google Pixel 3, in my opinion. And it's funny because this is using a Samsung panel, but it's not really as bright as a regular flagship Samsung phone or an iPhone. I don't know. Um, so hopefully in the next version it would be brighter. So yeah, um, the display definitely I will give it to the Google Pixel 3 only because the, the quality is really, really good. Now, though that, the really downside is that it doesn't get really that bright. And I would say that the... Okay, we'll see. So I would say that the Samsung gets just a little bit brighter than the Google Pixel 3, but the quality on the Pixel 3 outbeats it by a long shot, since this is only a 720p panel and this is a 1080p panel. But back to the first original point, this is an $800 phone versus a sub $200 phone. So yeah, and overall the design does look better on the Pixel 3. The next up is performance, and the performance, I mean, the Google Pixel 3 has the Snapdragon 845 chip versus the, um, I believe the J7 Refine uses an Exynos chip. So let's test out day-to-day -day tasks. So something like the phone app 3 to 1. Okay, the Pixel 3 1. The messaging app, let's see, 3 to 1. All right, so it was, it's really close. Now, when it comes to day-to-day -day tasks, the Google Pixel 3 beats the J7 Refine by a little bit. It's not really by a huge margin, but when it comes to the heavier tasks like uh, playing games or doing like photo editing, so things that really push the processor, the Pixel 3 will handle it more smoothly and the J7 Refine will really show its budget processor. So next up, I want to test out the speaker and just a heads up, the speaker on the Google Pixel 3 is better, but the big the uh, but the speaker on the J7 Refine is a really good speaker, especially for its positioning. So yeah, let's do that real quick. Well, some people in my previous videos said, said that it does it still has the same pink kind of color shift problem 
not really it's just that's just the quality of the panel um the colors on the uh, J7 refined the IPS color though do look a little bit dull It's just because it's an AMOLED screen the colors are more saturated and that's what you guys see There's no color shift like last year. Okay. I just wanted to clear that up real quick so The Pixel 3 speaker is better, but the, the speaker on the Galaxy J7 Refine is a really, really good speaker, and the sound quality is pretty good, and the sound quality that comes, uh, that comes out of it is pretty good. Now, the Pixel 3 at highest volume, there is a slight distortion that I just noticed. While the J7 Refine tends to keep the, um, the sound more balanced at highest volume, but then again, the Pixel 3 does get louder, so turning the volume down just a little bit is still going to be louder than the highest volume on the J7 Refine. So yeah, and also the Pixel 3 kind of vibrates in my hand. The back really vibrates when the, um, when the speaker is at highest volume. So yeah, there's that for you. Okay, so we talked about performance, we talked about the design. Let me, uh, let me cover, we also talked about the speaker. So let me cover up lastly on the battery life. So, okay, so let me cover up on battery life. And right off the bat, this is one category that the J7 Refine has the Pixel 3 beat by a long shot. The, the J7 Refine does have the bigger battery and since it doesn't really have a lot of pixels to push and it is also an IPS panel, um, the J, J7 Refine easily lasts all day at a full charge. While the Google, while the Google Pixel 3, you do need a charger before the end of the day. That's just been my usage. And the, uh, the upside of having the Pixel 3 over the J7 Refine is that the Pixel 3 does have some really fast charging. Whereas as far as I'm concerned, the J7 Refine does not have any quick charge of any sort. So it does charge slowly and I've tested it and it charges really slow. So that's one disappointing thing about the J7 Refine. But you do have to have your fast charger with you on the go. If you have a regular charger, the Pixel 3 will charge just as slow. And yeah, I mean, the last thing that I wanna cover up on is the camera and camera quality. And this is the best camera on any smartphone and I've mentioned that, and I've mentioned that in the beginning of the video. So there's that right off the bat. But I did a camera test on the J7 Refine. I'll leave the full video, the full review on this phone right in, linked, uh, linked in the description below. But just look at the, this dynamic range and the way that it produces colors, the color science, I don't know what type of image processing Google's been using. I don't know what they do, but it works and it works really, really good. So the color, it tends to really, um, I don't know, the picture just look amazing, okay? from colors to saturation to dynamic range to exposure. I mean, it checks really all the boxes, even when it comes to shots that are hard to, the, uh, that are hard to pull off. I tried to take this shot with my old iPhone and it, it, it either kept the background um, in focus and exposed or the foreground in focus and exposed. So it's really one or the other. But with the Pixel 3, it tries really hard and the HDR Plus does its magic and tries to keep everything in focus and very well exposed. So that's where, that's why this is the best camera that has been put on a smartphone. The Colors Pop is just an overall amazing camera. I know I've hyped this up, but really, you, ha you have to see it to believe it. And that's really all I have to say for the camera. And I, like I said, I am doing a full camera review on this phone. So let me just calm down a little bit. And this, the camera review for this phone is in the works. It's taken a little bit longer because I, I just keep taking pictures and I've enjoyed the camera experience on this phone. But yeah, okay, I have this camera up long enough, so let me just put the phone down real quick. And yeah, I mean, this is it. That's really all I wanted to talk about. I know it's kind of a long video, but stay with me. And I wanna thank you all so much for watching this one. If you enjoyed it, leave a thumbs up. I will really greatly appreciate it. Also, be sure to subscribe to the channel and I will catch you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.